the girls would be happy. You lost all the internet service and stuff over Valley there for a little while. Do we know why? Because it was in South, too. Hi, it's Jenny Pachano. Hi, Jenny. We don't know why. Yeah. Oh. Because I couldn't even get online through cell to figure out what was going on. Never give up your landline. <laughs> Did you? Phones will still work, man. <laughs> Village stopped and they was curious. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe it's the way they won't get along. Just yeah. <coughs> for three weeks, I think I'll have it turned off. Yeah. I saved it for it. I saved it for it.
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shut them up. 
God, we gather this morning to thank you for your many blessings. The beautiful autumn season that we have enjoyed. Your love that you shower us with daily and the abundant grace that you cover our lives. Father, we have a great deal to remember this week in honor. Tomorrow we'll celebrate the United States Marine Corps on our 246th birthday. 246th birthday. The Marine Corps has served in nearly every conflict in U.S. history. For those brave men and women in the Marines, we say hoorah and thank them for their service. Lord, on Thursday we'll honor our veterans. You have created these men and women to be the best of society. They are called to serve and protect our great land. We ask for your protection and safety for the men and women that give unselfish service to protect our freedoms. We thank you for those veterans that have paid the ultimate sacrifice. May their memories always be preserved for their love and dedication for our freedom. We would not have our freedoms without these outstanding men and women who stand tall for all of us. We ask you to continue to protect all our service men and women as they protect our freedoms. Lord, we have one of our colleagues leaving this week to enter a new chapter of her life. We're thankful for Arlene as she has served the residents of this county. She's done a great job and she will be missed. However, we are excited for her as she moves on to a new exciting season in the private sector. Bless her in her new job and guide her daily. And we ask you to continue to heal Commissioner Massar so he can return to his normal activities. These things we humbly pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag 
of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is Mike still here? Mike, would you please come up? I asked Mike if he wanted to come down. He's from our Veterans Administration. He stepped with the microphone. Uh, this week we want to honor our veterans. Um, we want to thank you for coming down and representing them. You do a great job up there. And uh, any words you'd like to add? I, I'd like you to talk about the 100th anniversary at the uh, unknown uh, Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers anniversary. This Thursday it's actually going to be. Yes. And uh, what we were... Uh, privileged to enjoy last Thursday. That was a wonderful program that the uh, Hudak uh, Capital Group put on. Uh, anybody that was fortunate to be there, uh, really, uh, the uh, Rapaz Band, uh, fantastic, uh, their brass ensemble, and uh, the uh, Master Sergeant from the uh, U.S. Air Force, a musician. Uh, he's a, one of the leading historians of uh, bugle calls. And uh, gave a slide program of the 100th anniversary of the 100, the, the first uh, interment of uh, the Tomb of the Unknown in uh, 1921 at uh, Arlington, and uh, gave a fantastic uh, history and uh, was particularly interesting about the bugle and the bugler who became uh, world famous. Uh, he performed taps at the uh, interment of the Unknown and uh, had a long and illustrious career in the U.S. Army. But um, anybody, uh, if you, I don't know if they taped that at all, but I, I don't know if they did it on YouTube for it, but it was, uh, it was great. Um, of course, we have the uh, uh, 100th anniversary of uh, the internment. I'd like to just say, uh, while we want to recognize veterans of all eras, uh, living and deceased, uh, I like this year. I'd like to particularly call attention to those veterans from World War II and Korea. We're losing them at an astounding rate. Uh, we're losing about 240, according to the World War II Museum. Um, we're losing about 240 World War II veterans a day. Out of the 16 million veterans who served during World War II, there are uh, less than 250,000 alive today, uh, less than 2%. Uh, so keep them in your, your thoughts. If you know a World War II veteran, reach out to them. Uh, same thing with Korean War veterans. They're, uh, they're not going to be with us long either. So uh, make a special effort with, with those two contingents, uh, I really ask. Great. Thank you. Thank you for coming down. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. To Great. Thanks, Mike. Okay, at this time we'll convene the Commissioner's Public Meeting and ask for approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Aye. We'll have public comment on agenda items only at this time. Good morning, Krista. Good morning. Um, I don't want to speak to specific items on the agenda, but I want to address the three commissioners based on everything that's gone on between our two offices this year. You've all commented multiple times that your highest interest and biggest responsibility is the fiscal affairs of the county, and you all are aware that there are items on this agenda today that do not take that into consideration. So I would call your attention to those matters and request that you do keep in mind that your fiscal affairs of the county are of the highest importance and I hope that you take that into consideration when you consider the items that I know you know I'm talking about. Thank you. Thank you. Well I, I don't know what you're talking about. That's and fine. I, I'm not going to entertain allegations and conjectures that are not based in any sort of specificity. Okay. All right, 2.0, Accounts Payable Cash Requirements Report with Randy Clemens. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning, Randy. I'm here to present the Cash Requirements Report for invoices due through November 17th, 2021, to be paid on November 10th, 2021, in the amount of 
$736.63. And this week, approximately 39% of the check run is county general. The rest is grants and RMS and escrow funds. Okay, any questions on the accounts payable? Okay, hearing none, can I have the motion to accept? I move to accept. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Thank you, Brandy. Um, Commissioner McDermott, you're holding the TBA actions, correct? Yeah, I am. Okay. I think you have director. Can I just say commissioner? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why everybody's like director McDermott because um, Roxanne Gray right. couldn't be here. <laughs> okay, TDA actions. Um, 3.1. Budget and finance. Reclassify administrative specialist pay grade 5-6 to junior accountant pay grade 7 effective 31 October 2021. Okay, um, can I have a motion? I'll move to approve. A second. I'll second. Okay, any discussion or comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Congratulations. Okay, recess. Commissioners meeting at this time for the salary board. And we will convene the salary board this time. Can I just make a quick comment on that last position? Yes. I think one of the positive things about it is we're trying as much as we can to find career ladders for people in, in the county so that when they come in, they're not just in one place for 10 or 20 years and that they can see a path to growing. And part of the creation of that is to reward people who have taken more initiative and also uh, recognize that there's a way to have a career path in the county. And I'd like to add to that, Commissioner, that <clears throat> uh, ever since I've been a commissioner, I've seen dedicated staff and employees who took that initiative. And we, uh, for the most part, didn't reward their years of ex experience uh, to qualify them for uh, an upgrade or a, or a, or a promotion. And this is to correct that. Uh, I've often said that many times I would prefer to have a person with 10 years of experience or even five years of experience uh, than a, a person that just got their bachelor's degree uh, in the same field. So uh, I'd like to congratulate, uh, you know, uh, Deb on this, or Michelle on this uh, promotion. And the comment that I'll make is um, we know many departments are severely understaffed. Uh, we've done some restructuring. We've done some um, incentives to try to obtain new staff and maintain our current staff. We've talked about the study that we're in the process of doing right now. Um, I look at this as, a, as a, a department that is severely understaffed at this time. Um, we're looking for some additional help there. There's been some people that have left and taken on new jobs. Um, Michelle has taken on their duties and additional duties that were assigned to her after um, the uh, director last year retired and Brady stepped into the, uh, the director's position. Michelle's taken on quite a few more duties. And uh, even though I, I didn't agree with the title, I'm not gonna hold somebody up because of a title. Um, and I think that she uh, deserves this. Uh, it doesn't mean that other people in the county don't deserve um, increases. We'll take a look at those as, as we look at the staffing in the departments. There's certain things we can't wait for the study. Uh, we have to act on them now because of what, what's going on in those departments. So moving forward, we think this is a, this is a good move and uh, we want to congratulate Michelle. As she moves on, she takes those extra duties and uh, we'll address each department as they come up and uh, we'll handle this. Thanks for your hard work. Okay, so at this time, uh, we're recessing the commissioner's meeting for the salary board, the salary board will convene. And uh, director, 
All right, uh, commissioners uh, in the uh, Office of Budget and Finance, 4.1, reclassify administrative specialist pay grade 5.6 to junior accountant pay grade 7 effective 10.31.1. Second. We have a motion? No. The motion, you've made a motion? Yes. Commissioner, second. Discussion? I second it. Okay, Discuss, discussion at this time or comments? Yes. Uh, well, I hear and appreciate everything that was just stated in the regarding this move, and I highly commend Michelle, and I appreciate everything that Michelle has done, and again, go back to everything that has gone on in this year. Comments that commissioners have made regarding the fact that the steps they've taken were for training. However, the people that you have taken weren't trained, and the people have left that were moved down to your office. I have offered assistance. I have tried to reach out in this whole process and have been shut out entirely. When you a label an accountant, everything that is associated with that title should be considered. It should not be labeled lightly. And this is not appropriate. Michelle should be granted ladder steps, improvement. This is not the appropriate way to do it. And discussions, you always say that I am not willing to talk to you, but I have been totally shut out. I have offered assistance. You have lost everyone that you said you were going to train. And now, again, you're not taking the fiscal responsibility of the county seriously because you're not using the resources that you currently have at hand. When I had an open position, I had 37 applicants. There's no reason those positions are still open. All due respect, controller, one of those positions went back to your office and the other one is left in the private sector. I understand. You do not set the title. I understand. Any, that's not your excuse. I have comments to I vote. let you talk. Okay. You do not set the title of a person. The commissioners in HR do that. Okay. I had a chance can, to comment can, to vote. Okay. You can disagree with the title, but we're not going to stop going ahead with a vote. I didn't say you should have to. Okay. But I had the right to comment in this vote. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you're entitled to your opinion, and we've expressed ours that at this time, one of those employees went back to your office, the other one left for the private sector, those jobs are posted. We're looking for new applicants, and at this time, we're moving ahead with this new title, which you don't make a distinction with, uh, what title is. That's HR and the commissioners. That's been set. I've expressed my view on it, which is in the majority, and we're going to move ahead with the vote. So any additional comments at this time? Done. Okay, thank you. I just, I just want to respond. The, the, there's, I don't want the public to think that there's something wrong by us calling someone a junior accountant. In the accounting field, you can be called a junior accountant without having sat for the CPA exam and without having uh, that title of accountant that comes from being a CPA. And in fact, for decades and decades and decades, accountants were trained in this country and around the world by apprenticing or working with other people. The same with lawyers. Over time, sort of they systems that uh, really controlled who could practice work required that you have a law degree to uh, more and more states required that you had to have a law degree from an accredited law school in order to get into court. And honestly, what it does is it keeps a lot of really smart people who might not be able to afford or who may not want to sit in a classroom being to be able to do things. And so the same with the accountant. We're not doing anything that's um, I don't want people that were doing think we're doing anything that violates good government, or that somehow, say that. or so that somehow impinges on the uh, fiscal affairs. That's all I want to be clear about. Is that it's in recognition of, I think probably ten years or more of experience in the county, and that that's the reason for the time. There are different ways to do it. To, be a, okay. saying. to well, be a junior county, you don't need an accounting degree. So. And then to the co contrary. Uh, I heard the controller say we shut her out, and that's the furthest from the truth. We um, just a few weeks ago uh, had we have our HR meeting every Monday at 10:30, which discusses salary board and RTDA, which we invite uh, the controller's office all the time. 
uh, and it is a regular meeting. And the controller and her deputy were not available that Monday, and we tried to call and go over. And then we called one of her other employees to see if they, you know, to, to, to um, inform them of what we were doing so that they could relay it to uh, the controller. And, and then we were reprimanded by the controller, don't you ever use my employees. And it was just a good gesture. It had nothing to do with trying to, to, to control her office or whatnot. The contrary, I think she's trying to be a commissioner. Again, and to I, respond, I take, commissioner. I, I take offense. I take offense that we shut you out because that's the furthest from the truth. You refuse to come. Commissioner, that goes back to this is an HR meeting, not a salary board meeting. And the only people that have votes or interest in the salary board is the, com the controller and someone who can vote in her absence, which is her deputy. I have sent multiple emails in communication to be open, honest, straightforward with all of you. When I am not available, please send me information. I have sent it to HR, all of you, and your director of administration to come into a elected official's office, any elected official, and take a employee into a meeting that they have no interest, no authority to do is not appropriate. That is all I was saying. We didn't take that employee. We asked them to come over. Okay? And, and he attended the, the, the HR meetings for years. For years. He did not. No, I'm saying your department did. I understand okay, that. Okay, for years. And things all of a have sudden, changed yes, this things year. Things all changed after the lawsuit. You stopped coming to the meetings. Anyway, that, that's not what this conversation is about. And I am trying to work with you. I have asked for multiple things again over the last few weeks that I still have not received. I have been shut out. It is not that I am not willing to work with you. I have asked for things. I do not get them. I cannot do the work of the controller that you say I have the information. I have the emails. You say that I have what I need. I do not. I ask for what I need, I do not get it. So we can argue all you want, not that arguing. is not the point. You bring up things constantly at these meetings? Because they are points and, to be and made. they are not true. They are true. I have the documentation. Okay. Any other comments? No. Thank you. Call for a vote. We have a second. Commissioner Massar, a second? Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Okay, it's carried three to one. Congratulations. Thank you. This time we'll adjourn the salary board actions and reconvene the commissioner's public meeting. Personnel actions with Director McDermott. <coughs> All right, commissioners, uh, yeah, quite a few of them, 16. Um, <coughs> do you want me to do them individually or? Yes, individual. I think we can do them as a group. No, individual. No. Okay. All right, 5.1 in the Office of Budget and Finance. Uh, Michelle McDermott, full time reclassification, junior accountant, pay grade seven. Uh, salary is $40,568, effective 14 November 2021. Okay, you have a motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Carry 3 0. 5.2 in the uh, district attorney's office, assistant county detective, administrative change remains part time pay grade um, 23,000. I take this as uh, $23.66. Seven two five cents per hour. Okay. Effective ten seventeen twenty one. I'll move to approve. I'll second. I second. Any discussion on this one? <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 So carry. Five point three in the Office of Budget and Finance. Uh, Lori Weston, full time replacement, lead fiscal technician, paid grade seven. $25.07 an hour, effective 14 November 2021. I have a motion. I'll move to approve. Second. I'll second. Any discussion? 
All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. That's vote to two to one. Carried. Uh, 5.4 in the Office of Facilities Management. Mark F. Bernardi, full time reclassification, maintenance manager, pay grade 10, salary of $58,725, effective 31 October 2021. Have a motion? I'll move to approve. second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. <coughs> 5.5, Facilities Management, Nathan T. Tucker, full-time reclassification, maintenance three, pay grade eight, $23 an hour, effective 31 October, 2021. All in favor say aye. All right, motion, I'm sorry. Move to approve. Second. I second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, so carried. Aye. 5.6, Facilities Management, Gregory J. Costa, full-time reclassification, maintenance three, pay grade eight, $24 an hour, effective 31 October, 2021. I have a motion. I move to approve. I have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, so carried. 5.7, facilities management, Joseph A. Kyle, full-time reclassification, maintenance supervisor, pay grade nine, $27 an hour, effective 31 October 2021. Motion. I'll move to approve. I'm second. I'll, I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Hey, before he continues, that was the last one, the facilities maintenance? No, we have one more okay. and then we'll have some comments. Okay, very good. 5.8, facilities management. Todd Marino, full-time replacement, maintenance three, HVAC, pay grade eight, $23 an hour, effective 14 November, 2021. Okay. I'll move to approve. I second. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 So these positions, 5.4 uh, through 5.8, all have to do with facilities management. We talked about this uh, in the past several weeks. Um, our facilities management, we retitled the from maintenance department these individuals have saved the county taxpayers millions of dollars over the years. Um, they are basically construction workers. They do HVAC systems, they do electrical, they do plumbing. Uh, they're jack of all trades. Um, they came in at a base rate of $20 per hour. Uh, we couldn't find workers. Ken was trying to find workers at that rate. We could not find workers. Uh, we had to bump the rate up to $23 an hour, which we did. It affected the other uh, wages within the department, so we slightly bumped them up uh, to make sure that we were um, we had a, a structure going forward in, within the, the, main, or the facilities management department. Um, right now, um, as of last I checked, uh, they were 574 work orders behind. Um, they were doing construction pro projects such as Solomon's building, uh, the sheriff's build out, which uh, if we put this stuff out for prevailing wage, uh, it would cost a half million dollars more just for the sheriff's office alone uh, to have that done through prevailing wage. Ken can do it for a third of the cost in his men. Um, we have, uh, as we sell this building, the executive plaza in, in, uh, in the next year, we'll be moving these departments across the street into the third street plaza. Ken will be responsible for that build out also. So there's plenty of work there that um, he has, plus everyday work to do for the county. Uh, the courthouse has not been updated since basically 1970. And within the last three years, uh, you've seen several bill outs over there with domestics, APO, JPO, and um, the different departments that are having work that hadn't been done in 50 years, basically. Um, new, new construction um, to bring it up to, to 2020 one instead of 1985 1970. Uh, so it's important that uh, we continue to uh, monitor this department. Uh, Ken, you've done a great job. Is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, not really. I really. uh, thank you very much for um, bumping the guys up. Um, we'll help retain them and 
hopefully we can get more. I can't hear him. Online. Can you come up, Commissioner Massar? Can't hear you. If you can come up, and again, we're online, so it's important that the public hears you too. <laughs> and I'd just like to follow you up. It, is that it was it was more than months. Uh, Ken made proposals back over well over a year ago, um, and so it took a long time to to uh, redo the reclassification. And I, I think we got it right. Thank you, commissioners. I really appreciate the pump ups. It will help um, maintain the personnel I have and. I'm really hoping it will allow us to attract more um, so we can fill open positions and um, get back to work. So, Thank you. you know, for, for the other folks in the county, I think that we have to look at when one group goes up, not as something that, well, what about me, but more as the commissioners are trying to tread a line between using the study that's coming out or that we're going to be doing and facing the reality that we have a labor market that's changing rapidly and that we have job responsibilities that have to be done. Um, you know, there's a deadline to get Judge Solomon's building done. Has, has to be done by a deadline. Um, and other things. And, and so we just want you to know that we value everybody in the county and we're trying to do as we can with different departments to not put everything off for the study, but to uh, both deal with market changes and with uh, needs as well as um, as well as uh, trying to be fiscally responsible um, and and the description that uh, Commissioner Metzger gave is absolutely true I mean the, the work that's done by these folks is is uh, is very difficult and it's not just the fact that they save us money but when there are changes that have to be made it changed it saves us a lot of grief and flexibility to be able to send over from Ken's department you know two or three people to deal with a problem as opposed to having to go out and get bids and uh, and you can only do that if you have the expertise in-house with someone who knows how to install a complicated HVAC system or someone who knows how to deal with the wiring uh, that comes from different levels of power entering different buildings so we do appreciate it and uh, it has taken a while, but I think Commissioner Massera is correct. I think we did we did get it correct. And that's a good point, Commissioner Maravito. Uh, for instance, we recently, uh, a few months ago, we, we brought back an employee because he was working on his job at Solomon's building. He was doing electrical work. Correct. And uh, he took a, a, another job with another municipality and uh, advanced himself. But he really cared about that that job. He really wanted to finish it. So instead of us paying the prevailing wage at ninety some dollars an hour for an electrician plus the the uh, engineering study, he was able to come back and finish his job at thirty five dollars an hour. Absolutely. He um, calls me three or four times a week um, to check on exactly where we're at, what's going on, um, to help <coughs> troubleshoot some of the issues we're running into. Um, he stops up probably twice a week if not three times just to make sure everything is going the way it needs to be to do his part of the electrical in between our phases of the building and um, um, it just shows the type of personnel that we had or have working for the county um, they really care about what they do in, in the county okay well, thank you Ken thank you yeah. Okay, 5.9. Yep. Uh, 5.9 in domestic relations, credit Al Davis, full time replacement, domestic relations attorney, pay grade 11, salary $59,151.32, effective 14 November 2021. I'll move to approve. Ten second. second. All of your side. Aye. Aye. So carried. 5.10. In domestic relations, Sue A. Clayton, full time promotion, replacement deputy, uh, TRO, pay grade 11, salary $60,799.32, effective 14 November 2021. No motion. I'll move to approve. Second. Second. All fair, say aye. Aye. 
All right. Aye. So carried. Chairman, could you explain where, where their pay comes from? Domestic relations. Yes, it's through the salaries or it's through the funds that they collect. Um, Greta is actually taking, she's being replaced, but they, they had an attorney over there to handle domestics law. Greta was the, the deputy. Uh, the attorney's job was open. She stepped into that. She was actually an attorney when she came here. And, uh, and then Sue is taking, uh, being promoted from an agent to the, to the deputy. And those salaries are, are paid through the funding that they receive uh, from the state for the domestic relations fees. Anything else? No, and, and just just so everybody knows, they've been very successful and have been recognized by the federal government for the work that they've done in being able to um, efficiently and effectively collect child support, which when <coughs> child support isn't paid, ultimately the rest of the taxpayers end up either paying transfer payments for food stamps or paying LIHEAP or paying whatever, uh, or, and then of course, of course, in the worst situation, the, the children go without um, and so the job that they do is to try to make sure that those kids that the parents who gave birth to those kids take responsibility for them and we appreciate the fact that they've been recognized by the federal government for doing that successfully uh, and actually the money that they've earned from the federal government has allowed the taxpayers to save money so for example they're able to buy a vehicle which they may need which if they hadn't earned the performance awards, we would have to pay out of our general fund, but they're able to pay it. Or a shredder or a copier that they need for their office, they're able to pay out of those funds from the federal government, which otherwise would have come out of our general fund. So and They have a vehicle that taxpayers didn't pay for, it was paid out of that fund. Right, but the point is they need the vehicle, whether it's, right? Yes, it's paid for out of that fund. Right, right. because they, that's the one that the um, investigator detective goes out on warrants with. Right. Exactly. So, anyway, so that's that's good news. Nobody in the fire or the department. Yes. Yes, Commissioner, you're right. That five hundred thousand dollar cost to to basically retrofit our building that the taxpayers yep. own was paid for by the federal government from the money that they uh, that they got from the performance bonus for doing a great job. That's a good point, Director. You had a comment? I was bringing that. Oh, that same thing. Oh, okay. 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 Um, 5.11. 5.11. Uh, in DPS Communications, Tyler A. Fetterman, part-time replacement telecommunicator, two, pay grade seven, $18 an hour, out to exceed 1,000 hours, annually effective 14 November 2021. And, and Tyler's trying to help fill the void out there until we get more people trained and qualified. So we want that we Tyler. We appreciate that, Tyler. Absolutely. So I have a motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All favor say aye. 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 So aye. carried. iPhone 12. Uh, in DPS Communications, Katie DeSanto, full time reclassification telecommunicator to pay grade 7, $18.48 an hour, effective 14 November 2021. I have a motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All favor say aye. 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 So carried. 5.13. In planning and community development, William I. Cleese, full time replacement, natural resource planner, pay grade eight, $38,933.97, effective 15 November 2021. Okay, can I have a motion? I move to approve. I have a second. I have a second. Shannon, you're here today. Do you have any comments? Nope. And this is to replace Eve, Eve, Eve yeah. who did a terrific job for yeah. us. So we, we're glad to see we got a replacement that quick. And we want to welcome William to the community. He came from. He is from the community. Oh, he Great. is from the community. Okay, Wonderful. I'm sorry, I was yep. confusing him with. And we need to get our solid waste plan moving forward now. Yes. Okay. As soon as he gets on board. Right. <laughs> okay. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Five point fourteen in planning and community development. Sherry L. Hook, full time replacement, clerk for pay grade five, $18.60 an hour, effective 14 November 2021. 
Okay, so Sherry's <coughs> going over there and filling the replacement. That was a retirement? No, Heather oh, George right. moved to the zoning the officer. The zoning officer, right. Okay. Yes. Right. And that uh, planning and community development is another department that has struggled uh, in the last <coughs> uh, year. They've had 16 positions recycled, or is it the last 18 More. months? What's that? Yeah, please come up. Yeah, I think you should let the public know how difficult it is. To um, I'm Shannon Rossman. I'm Director of Planning and Community Development. Um, since I started October 14th of 2019, we've had 18 position changes. Um, I believe four retirements. We've had lost people to PennDOT. We've lost people to DEP. We've lost people to the private sector. Um, and then pe we lost somebody to the Department of Agriculture, which is where uh, Eve went. And then uh, we've also, you know, had people move up, but we've also had people leave for the private sector, and it's just been, it's been difficult. Um, out of 22 positions, I believe, having 18 position changes can be extremely difficult. And, you know, we've heard complaints from the, from the municipalities because of, because of that. Um, hopefully, we're almost to the point where we will be back up to full speed, but our our focus now is going to be on how we can retain the employees and um we'll be looking to try to uh come up with a solution to that and and i honestly i will say that it's not unlike some of the other difficulties we've had with retaining people whether it's in facilities management or whether it's in 911 911 uh or wherever it's it's hard to retain people and it's hard on existing staff when they train new people and then they try to get back to their other project and the person leaves and so they jump back on the projects that that person they trained was doing but they're also trying to cover the projects that they have in their normal workload and so it's something we have to try to find a solution to right and and most of the issues i mean we have grants that we deal with every year for housing for fair for community development block grant funding for um, transportation for things like that but then we also have you know the solid waste plan we need to apply to the state for funding so we can update our solid waste plan and work with the landfill to make sure that we have a solid waste plan because we're required to and you know not having that staff to continue on with that now we have the implementation money that we'll hopefully get for, <coughs> for the county clean water action plan um, we also try to work with the municipalities to get them grant funding for other projects. So it's really difficult to try and we have a Brownfields grant, you know, that we have had to put on hold until we can get uh, a new planner. So um, there's a lot of items that we're just kind of in stay or keep our heads above water right now until we can get new people in and trained. And we've got to keep Shannon, going. Yes. I just want to add that, you know, uh, the planning department uh, sometimes goes uh, unnoticed, uh, but how critical is your department? Uh, let me let me assure you that through the collaboration of not just your office, but but the other municipalities within the levy system, mm -hmm. okay, we would probably have had to be subjected to uh, uh, the the national flood insurance which would have been totally unaffordable for the majority of Williamsport, Royal Sock, and uh, without the efforts that our planning department and, and the other communities uh, put into this levy system, uh, it wouldn't happen. This is, this is going to be a huge expense to our community, but it is, it is running in a manner that is satisfying the needs of not only uh, FEMA uh, and uh, the, Army you know, Corps. the other agencies. The Army Corps, yeah. So Army Corps, uh, they're satisfied with what we're, what we're doing. And, and a matter of fact, we brought them in. This is the first time I've ever been with the Army Corps or FEMA, uh, those agencies, and even uh, DEP. Uh, and had such a, a, a great meeting with them where they, they looked at our plan, they looked at our situation, said, we're going to get this done uh, in, the, in the least uh, expensive uh, manner and hopefully they can help us out. 
uh, in in other directions, by the way. So right, and thanks some for of this, your effort, and yeah. I want to shout out to your entire department. Thanks to their effort uh, and what they do for our citizens. Thank you. You know, I sometimes wonder whether, in in comparison to other counties, whether we get as many grants as we could. And that's not a criticism of the department, but if there aren't people there to be able to file for the grants. And it, it's becoming increasingly important because the way the money in the new infrastructure bill is coming down in transportation and in some of the other ones, there's money set aside specifically for competitive grants. So we need to to be on top of that so that we can get our fair share. For right, and it's going to be extremely important because we were trying to get the Warrensville road slide uh, fixed under the under the surface transportation bill, which then when it got combined with the infrastructure bill, they stripped all of the quote earmarks from that bill. So we're going to be trying to go after other funding now because it, it's still on our transportation improvement plan, but we only get $12 million a year. And to put a four and a half million dollar project on there, you've got to have it over so many years because we have to be fit. Others don't have to be fiscally responsible, but we have to be fiscally responsible. And so therefore it's, it's puts it through a, a, a many year phase. You know, so if we can try and get additional funding through something with the infrastructure at the state or federal level, we're gonna to have to try and do that so we can try and move that further up on the schedule. Yeah, and it would be remiss. It would be remiss of me not to mention our other partners and uh, uh, our consultants, Wood, uh, Wood and Keller, Keller, yeah, and the and, city and, and South uh, Delta. Yeah. It's it's my understanding with the infrastructure bill passing the other night. Now the earmarks have gone away, and that's going to delay the Lake Run Road project. That's the Warrenville Road slide. Yeah. Yes. For look one, yeah. And that was on target to be completed, and now it's going to be delayed. Yes, yeah. We were we would have been able to move it at least a year or two ahead of schedule if we would have been able to get that funds because we had about 3.5 million in that for request um, through Congressman Keller, um, but unfortunately, uh, they did not get put into the bill for signing. So um, we'll need to try and find. I mean, it's still projected to be fixed, but it's. Delayed. It's going to be delayed because we have to be we have to provide a fiscally uh, responsible plan, and because of the size of and scope of the project, um, it moves it out. I can't remember the exact date, but it it's it's further out than what we would have what we would like. It's unfortunate that those people out that road, that route, yeah, they have suffered for years. Yeah, and this is just a needless more. And, delay. and it's not the only slide that we have in the county. It's the, the only one that's officially closed because of it. The other ones are <coughs> of, up in the Pine Creek watershed area. And, um, but they're also going to be, you know, all it takes is one bad storm for it to, to close multiple areas. And those people out there, they've been, um, not only does it cost more to go to detours for gas, the fuel companies that deliver mm -hmm. fuel to their homes, they reached out to me and said they had to pay higher fuel bills mm -hmm. as a result of those delivery charges. Yeah. So. so that's where sometimes when we read things, I mean, you know, <coughs> earmarks were there for a while, right? And then they went away, and I think they were taken out of the bill basically to get some votes to pass the bill because there were people who weren't going to vote for the bill with the earmarks in it. And so the problem is you read about earmarks being used in places like the bridge to nowhere 20 years ago that happened out west and we say that's horrible. So the problem is that there's also at a local level there are things that um, we could use with some of the things like the earmarks. So I guess constituents just have to look at the situation and decide whether at the end of the day maybe they're helped by having some of these things in the legislation. Right. Well and it wasn't, it, yeah it was quote an earmark but it was something that's on our tip Right. And our official PennDOT approved, federal, federally right. approved TIP, which is our transportation improvement plan. Um, so it's not something pie in the sky that right. was like the bridge to nowhere. Right. I think that was in Alaska or something right. like that. But you know, it's not like this pie in the sky project. <coughs> this is a project that affects um, our local people and is needs to get fixed. Yeah. And 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 we have many other projects like that. And John, I think yesterday we that's on the TIP for the. Uh, you were at the transportation meeting yesterday, right? No, he wasn't. Oh, I was. was. Okay. 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 I was. Oh, you were. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Well, so we're going to get it done. That's the good thing. Yeah. Hopefully, we can get some other funding to move it along quicker. Yeah. Okay. 
So 514, we had a motion and a second, I believe. Yep. In favor say aye. 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 So carried. 5.15, RMS transfer station, Anthony Mitchell, full-time, new position, truck driver, pay grade 6, $18 an hour, effective 15 November 2021. Can I have a motion? I'll move to approve. Second. Second. Um, discussion, just uh, briefly, um, Jason Yorks had reached out to us last week about uh, bumping up this pay slightly. Uh, he had two people that were, had applied for the position. I think it was sixteen seventy six an hour, and um, the two people walked away from the job. Uh, so we bumped it up to eighteen dollars an hour, and uh, we're glad to see that we have an individual that is taking the job. Again, these fees are paid by RMS. Um, they pay their their own fees over there and their wages uh, due to their um, the fees they collect. So. Um, just want to point that out before we vote on that. So all in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jason. 5.16 in adult probation. Riley and Thomas, full-time reclassification, adult probation officer, pay grade, APO, uh, $21.95 an hour, effective 14 November 2021. Okay. A motion? I'll move to approve. Uh, second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carry. Aye. Okay. That completes our personnel actions at this time. And we will recess the commissioner's meeting for the zoning hearing. It's a public hearing with uh, Mark. There he is. Where <coughs> you, Mark? Mark. My name is Mark Oz. I'm the Development Services Supervisor for the Office of Planning and Development for Lake County County. Um, I'm bringing to you a proposed uh, zoning map amendment. Um, this is requested by the Limestone Township Supervisors. Uh, the map was created uh, July 27th and presented to the supervisors. Uh, all comments were favorable. Uh, in which they voted at their August 2nd meeting to approve uh, the proposed zoning map. Um, the map was uh, map was created based on uh, our partner municipalities' comments, uh, to which we received no comment after reaching out to them. Uh, this will affect the five districts zoning districts in light in Limestone Township, which are agricultural, countryside, neighborhood preservation resource protection rural center um are there any questions i have that's their existing and this is the proposed and i believe there's a supervisor here from Longstone, right yes does he want to make any comments then? just want to say thank you it suits our personnel and more like our original zoning, so it'll work out better for our people. I mm -hmm. thank the zoning officers for doing that for us. And they, um, <coughs> they part of the zoning part? Yeah. So, so this is a little commercial for municipalities out there. You can see as being part of the zoning partnership that you can still have control and make changes. Maybe you could explain a little of that, Mr. Haas or Ms. Roseman. Sure. The way the zoning partnership works is we have 20 municipalities that are part of the zoning partnership with the county. And if the municipality uh, calls us up and says, hey, we're having this issue, we would like a change, we'll sit down with them. They pay a small fee each year based upon their, their population. And what we do is, is uh, we don't charge them for the for the map amendment changes because of they're already paying that small fee for our services so we will work with them make the changes and this is what they've requested we uh, met with them we uh, made those changes to the map they felt that the changes would reflect well in their municipality 
We then sent it out to all the partnership municipalities for any comments. Um, there were no comments since it really doesn't affect any of the other municipalities. And um, then we take it to the Planning Commission. They agree. Uh, we make those changes and they forward it to the commissioners for the public hearing process. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, and then we just accept public comment and then okay. if there are no issues, we would ask the commissioners to adopt it. Is there any public comment at this time? And you you want a motion you want that yeah, adopted motion. today? Yep. Yeah. I'll move to approve. And that you need to close the public hearing. First. Okay. Yep. This time we'll close the public hearing and reconvene the commissioner's public meeting. And I've asked for a motion. I'll move to approve the Flintstone Township Zoning District Amendment. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 So aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And now we'll recess the commissioner's meeting once again for the Board of Assessments. Good morning, commissioners. I'm here to ask you to approve the certifying of the tax rolls for 2022. There are 51,977 taxable parcels. The taxable assessment is 5,754,958,921. There are 2,058 exempt parcels for an exempt assessment of 1,025,971,130. Can you repeat that? 1,025,000,000. 1, oh, 1, 1,025,971,130. Okay. That information is in the agenda. Okay. Yeah. For total parcels of 54,035, for a total assessment of Six billion seven hundred eighty million nine hundred thirty thousand oh fifty one. Is there any questions? Yes, Brooke. Yes. I have a question for you, and you may not be able to answer this, but could you give us the information? In twenty twenty one, taxable parcels. One, how many were there? And two, what was that assessment? You know, our 2022 assessments at 5.74 billion, did that increase the assessed values or did that decrease? Um, that increased. The 2021 certified tax rolls, the taxable assessment was 5,741,603,725. So there was an increase from last year, which would make the county taxes increase by 84,000 next year, but next week I will be before you for the Lake Coming Mall refund. So we will be refunding the Lake Coming Mall due to a real estate appeal. So basically we are breaking even from 2021 to 2022 due to the real okay. estate appeal. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll move to approve the um, tax roll certification for 2022. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We can um, recess the Board of Assessment revisions and we're reconvening the Commission of Public Meeting this time. We'll go to action items. Takes us to action items, and the first action item is with Director McDermott. Um, voting on personnel actions. Commissioners, uh, item 8.1, um, request for <coughs> approval on the personal actions uh, processed in the month of October 2021. Okay. Any motion? I'll move to accept the personnel action. Any comments or? questions. Hearing none, I, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 So carried. 8.2, Brooke Wright voting on agreement with uh, Pictometry. Pictometry <laughs> International. Good morning again. Um, I'm asking for your approval on an agreement with Pictometry International. The amount is 
$688,251.35. I have here it spread over seven years. Actuality, it's spread over six years from 2022 to 2027, but we will have to have a deposit made this year once the agreement is signed. A little background on pictometry is Eagle View and pictometry are part of our business based in New York and Washington State. They use 3D aerial to view high resolution images of buildings in their entirety. The technology was developed at Rochester Institute of Technology and shows structures at what's called oblique angle or 45 degree angle from all sides, providing for a perspective and overhead shot image that's accurate to one one hundredth of an inch. This technology also has what's called a change binder which will take our sketches of houses and overlay them with the 3D aerials from pictometry. That's gonna help to determine if there's a section missing from the house or we're missing a structure, because we do run into issues where people will build things onto their house without getting permits and everything, or we don't get permits from zoning officers sometimes. Um, we can also have the data collectors work from this program when they can't be out in the field. The flyovers will be done every two years now, this program is just not for the assessment office. It's going to benefit other departments in the county. The sheriff's office can use it when they are serving warrants. They're, it's going to allow them to see a 3D visual of the house. Adult and juvenile probation, Department of Public Safety, the 911 center, um, planning and community development. And I've also found out that other counties do allow other their townships and police departments to use this program too. Now this program is going to be private. It's not going to be available to the public because of due to the sensitivity of 3D images of people's homes. Um, Could you repeat that, Brooke? What part? The one you, you, you talked about is going to be used privately. About this being private? Is that what you said? Yes, yeah, um, I, I all the other counties I've spoken to, they said this is not available to the public. We, are, They have kept it private, and this is due to the 3D images of someone's home. Okay. We don't want that out there to the public. Um, I also want to make aware that the program has been heavily discounted around $200,000. So this is why there was a rush to get this signed before the end of the year. Is there any questions? And this would also be important in terms of the assessment, right? If we decide to move out on reassessment? Yes, uh, this will be compatible with the Tyler software. It was recommended to get pictometry in preparation if we do do a reassessment. I also want to mention that there are 67 counties in Pennsylvania, and we are one of the eight that do not use pictometry. So this is really going to be beneficial to our office and other offices. I'm very excited to be getting it. So, 59 counties use pictures? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? I have a motion. I'll move to approve. Ah, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. 8.3 with Ken George voting on uh, <coughs> Amendment 2 to con with the contract for fire and security. Good morning, Commissioners. Okay. Um, this is agreement with Monotronics um, up at the Solomon Build. It's actually to um, add a pull station to the rear door for the fire alarm system. Okay. And that's a budget of item on Correct. this year. Okay. No motion? I'll move to approve. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Thank, Thank you. you. Dave Goodwin has 8.4 and 8.5, but Nancy's here doesn't today. Like, that doesn't look like Dave. <laughs> Sorry, Nancy. <laughs> okay. Um, so you have the two. I'll let you go ahead. Mm -hmm. Uh, the first one 
is a vote on juvenile probation services grant award notification invoice. I'm just going to read you what uh, Dave had written up for me uh, for this. Uh, JPO must complete and submit a juvenile justice system enhancement strategy implementation survey to support the implementation of department department's JJSCS. The JJSCS is a strategy that enhances the capacity of our juvenile justice system through the use of evidence-based practices. It also demonstrates an ongoing commitment to data collection, analysis, and research. The plan must also demonstrate a commitment to continuous quality improvement. The plan was approved and we are receiving $242,417. Motion. I'll move to accept the grant. Right? Yeah. Second. Very, very good news. Yeah. Two hundred and forty-two thousand. Think, you're, think you're kind of taken back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll favor say aye. 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 Thank you. And then uh, eight point five. We have a new contract with uh, Chore Youth and Family Services that I'm looking for your approval on. This is out of Reading, PA. They have a girls' residential program, boys' residential, specialized residential, foster care, and specialized foster care, and in-home services, and a specialized family-based program. This is just one more thing we're looking for to have another choice of how to help our kids that are in placement. You don't have anybody there at this time? No. Okay. And again, it's important to have these Choices. Choices of going forward, and they're find, they're being uh, more difficult to find. You had to go out to Ohio to find one. Yes, we did. And uh, so we want to thank uh, you and uh, your department for the service to look looking for these agencies as backups in case we need to utilize them because they're not easy to locate these days. No, they're not. Yeah. Congratulations on the grant. Yes. Tell it, and thanks to Dave and <laughs> well. Judge McCoy and everyone else who worked to get that. Absolutely. I have a motion. I'll move to approve the short contract. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carry. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Commissioners. Yeah, have a good day. You too. 8.6, uh, Christopher Ebner voting on 2021-2022 um, CJAS training grant application. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, before you today is uh, a CJAB Criminal Justice Advisory Board Technical Assistance Grant in which we have been working for the past six to seven years with like Coleman College doing <coughs> a recidivism study for um, the county. These monies are used for the students um, each semester that are in the criminal justice field uh, with Dr. Richmond and her staff and they do a lot of the legwork. Um, they go to the adult probation office, they work with uh, the Lycoming County Prison in compiling uh, this data. Also uh, to note I was in contact with Dr. Richmond uh, I believe it was the end of September and this is kind of an initiative that, it, that uh, they want to move on statewide and we are kind of the pilot, have been the pilot program for this, the only county that has, w has willingly gone down this endeavor to compile the data and uh, provide a, um, a study of such numbers accumulated. So. Um, that is where we're at. Uh, it, it, it's beneficial also to the county because we, we have been able over the last seven years to set up a volunteer program uh, as well as strengthen our intern program uh, and been able to uh, help work in collaboration with Lycoming County, yeah. Lycoming College. We want to thank Lycoming College and Dr. Richmond for uh, initially Dr. Richmond was given a $10,000 grant way back to uh, study recidivism and uh, help to establish a GO reentry person uh, that was hired through, uh, well, was hired now through GO, reentry person and uh, coordinator. Um, volunteer committees that have been established out, out of it as a result. 
it's good to see that up, operating again. But these numbers, we needed the recidivism numbers to help establish that. That's a huge, huge undertaking. I, I was still employed next door when it's the college students were coming in. It's very tedious, and they have to look up records, and and um, it's time. It's very time consuming. And they did a fantastic job. We were able to obtain interns out of it. It was just a win-win between Lincoln County and Lincoln College. We want to thank them for their efforts. And, and hopefully we continue to do so here today. And I, I can't overemphasize how important it is to have interns from Lycoming College and Penn College who participate with the county for several reasons. First of all, a lot of them end up staying in the community. And in a community that lost 1.8% of its population, in the last census, that is critical to the county's growth. And secondly, they often come to work for the county. And um, the county needs com people committed to public service who, who are not going to necessarily leave, go off to Boston, New York, Washington, or wherever. So hats off to you and to, uh, to Dr. Richmond and all of you for, for doing that. It's an unintended consequence. I wouldn't be surprised if one of these kids who participates ends up working in APO or doing something. Taking your job when you retire, <laughs> Mr. Ebner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. And I can see it becoming a, a model program for the state. It does yeah. so. I'm anxious to yeah. see where that goes. So uh, she's approached me and uh, yeah. uh, may have to attend a meeting sometime in the spring. So Because 10 years ago, people wouldn't even know how to be again to even approach and attack it. And, and she, was, she brought that approach to us and, and uh, brought all the players to, to the table and communicate it to it so we can get it done. And it's grant money to boot. Right. Right? That is correct. So it's, it's good. I'll move to approve. I'll take it. On their side? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Commissioners. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, this is something else that uh, our Planning and Community Development Department has been helping with is the uh, Timber Run Industrial Park. Uh, and uh, what we've been trying to do is, you know, as the landfill is is done with the soil bar area, we the county intends to turn that into the Timber Run Industrial Park. As you all know, we have Digger Specialties, which is in the process of building their their facility for their fence manufacturing, powder coating facility. Um, we were just out there yesterday. They have uh, steel going up, and I believe they hope to have that under roof within about three months. Um, they're finishing up some concrete work. Uh, they are also, um, we're also bidding out a, the access road currently for the front of that. Um, one of the portions of that project is to get potable water to the company, um, which is going to cost about $825,000. We've been working with Delta consultants to apply for a Keystone Community Program grant to help cover $500,000 of that $825,000 water line improvement pro program, which will is working with the landfill to make sure they continue to have fire suppression water at the water tank and also have potable water for their facility. and. Um, this will help offset some of that cost. Great. We're still looking for funding for the access road. We hope to get some state TIF funds for that, but that's taking a while. So we have some of the UGI funds. We have about, about a third of the funds, quarter to a third of the funds for the UGI uh, line. <coughs> we have uh, a good chunk of change for the water line, and now we're still going to work for the um, the access road funds on top of this one. So you need to hear about the progress going on. Yeah, yeah. It's it's taking a while. It's yet. <laughs> it's just it's it it's very difficult to do projects right now. Um, a lot of moving parts. Yes, and supply and demand is not exactly that that working means? out very well for anybody right now. No. But um, this will help offset, you know, as long as this comes through, this will help offset uh, some of the costs of the water line improvements. 
and we were all, our we were also uh, I was at Brady Township last night. We're going to look to get some ARC funds that'll be on either next week or the 30th agenda to to work with the township to apply for ARC funds for the improvements to the back part of the road access, not this section. So. So we want to thank Governor Wolf and DCED. Uh, Secretary Davin for awarding this grant. This is a huge amount of money. This is $500,000 and it's uh, it's really congratulations to the planning department for the work you did to get that. Yeah. And it's and not only initiative of finding it, but putting together the paperwork and building the case for it. So one of the reasons I'm really excited about this is because it's clear that for us to move ahead economically, we need to have a strong community and economic development department. and. And, and it may mean that we need to look like we have in other departments at some of the compensation that we pay to attract people and retain people. Because getting a grant like this uh, is, this is just one of them. There are tons of them out there. So good work to you all. And we really Shannon, need John to, Abel, the yeah. whole team up there. We really need to say thank you to Senator Yaw, yeah. Representative Whelan, Representative Absolutely. Ham. They yeah. all work very hard on this grant. Um, so, uh, Absolutely. All they of were, them helped us get this is, with this was, of support. Yeah, because this is act, this was actually in the budget then. They were able to get this through the budget process. So yeah. they yes. were very, very key in this. Right. Great. Thanks to Senator Yo and Representative Wheel and Ham too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, can I motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. Aye. 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 So just to point out, Commissioner, you always remind us how many jobs are we gonna have coming down there? 150 initially. So, so that $500,000 grant is going to help develop an industrial park that will have 150 jobs with Digger, and then the plan is hopefully to get up others. Up to, he, up to he 200. He wants to expand up to 225, and these jobs are in the uh, in the 40s, yeah. in the 40s range, which yeah. is a good a career. And these are career-type jobs right. that the county is looking forward to. And hats off to Jason Fink at the chamber for the hard work he did in uh, pursuing and following up with he Digger. Says, he was instrumental. All, all the time that they called at all hours and everything. And this brings that property back on the tax rolls because currently, yeah. you know, now that the um, dirt has been taken off, you know, there we d we've subdivided the parcel. This parcel will be back on the tax rolls. It is in the Keystone Opportunity Zone, but that just means that they'll be paying reduced taxes for a period of time. They there was no taxes being paid on that previously because the county owned it. So. Yeah. And their earned income tax from the jobs uh, will be a huge benefit and also add to the tax benefit of it being back on our tax rolls. Yeah, absolutely. Good point. Thank you, Shannon. Mm -hmm. Director? Commissioners uh, 8.8, .8, uh, seeking your approval of the program management agreement for the emergency food assistance program, uh, TFAP with the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture. This is really just our agreement with uh, the Department of Ag on how we need to manage this program. Okay. Any questions? Hearing that to a motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, it's so okay. 8.9, John Lavelle. Good morning, Commissioner. Um, this is a uh, we, uh, re replacement grant agreement for HMGP 4267. HMGP is uh, the uh, property acquisition grant uh, through FEMA Hazard Mitigation Grant Program. 4267 is, is uh, basically just the uh, presidential disaster declaration that was, uh, I think, in 2016. Um, this was a $1.1 million grant award uh, at this point. Uh, you know, we, we progressed through uh, most of the work. Um, all the properties have been purchased and demoed, um, and we are just working on closeout and uh, reimbursement for our costs. Um, so what I think happened is, is there was quite a few of these grants throughout the, the nation. Uh, progress is slow through COVID, and instead of doing a, a simple rescoping letter, where they give us an extension on time. They just gave everybody that with an active grant in that presidential disaster declaration another year. So that's why uh, we have a grant uh, agreement replacement instead of our normal rescoping letter. 
So the grant says it's for two million forty-seven thousand two ninety. But I'm sorry, I misspoke. Is that correct? Yeah. Two, good. Yeah. Congratulations. And that's yeah. Good work. Thank you. <coughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, so uh, we hope to close this out actually in the next few months. We shouldn't take as long as they give they've given us here. here. So John, ex explain uh, to the public the timeline that's required by the planning department to follow up on on this grant. With with a typical H and G P process, um, yeah. <laughs> it's it's random. It depends on what kind of disaster it is. You know, all disasters are bad, um, horrible experiences for a lot of people. Uh, but you know, if you have a tropical storm Lee. Uh, you can account for damage in a much, much faster rate than you can with, with some of these, you know, smaller um, storm systems that, that greatly impact uh, small geographic areas. Um, so, you know, just that process of, of getting to a, an actual presidential disaster declaration can vary in length, you know, between a, a, a few months or, 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 you know, the better part of a year. Uh, until you, you, you go and verify damages and, and do the valuations and, and figure out which communities uh, involved are uh, eligible. Uh, but then on, on the planning side, the planning department side, then you need to you know, go into the community, figure out, uh, especially during a disaster situation, which, which homeowners um, have been impacted the greatest and are interested in, in such a program. Explain them all the ins and outs of it because it's not a simple process there's a lot of actual accounting um, and verification of you know if they hold uh, certain types of flood insurance um, how how much damage was done to their house if it was substantial or not um, things like that <clears throat> getting appraisals uh, setting up closings it, it can take you know a, a typical submission to a buyout uh, where you're sitting at a closing table with somebody could take a year and a half and and that's probably typical and it could take longer depending on the year and how much works out there. So. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a motion. I'll move to approve. A second. All good for Aye. Thank Aye. you. Aye. So Perry, thank you. Jenny, Jenny Picciano is on the line from 8.10. Jenny, are you still there? Hi, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. It's okay. Go ahead, Jenny. Hi. Uh, we are seeking approval to submit um, a grant uh, for five for nine hundred fifty-two thousand five hundred and thirty. Oh, geez. Nine hundred fifty-two thousand five hundred thirty-four dollars um, to PHSA, which is the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Authority, for seven projects this year for fair. Fair funding, which is the Pennsylvania Housing Affordability um, and Re Rehabilitation Enhancement Fund. Um, we do this every year. Um, these are funds generated uh, with Marcellus Shale um, funding through Act 13. Um, this year, we're planning to submit um, for seven projects, and they are Steps Home with a Need project for $210,000. Steps supportive housing or supportive housing program for two hundred ten thousand dollars. Transitional living centers master leasing program for two hundred ten thousand dollars. Steps urgent need program for twenty five thousand dollars. American rescue workers rental assistance program for a hundred thousand dollars. Greater like homing habitat for humanities memorial home Scott Street parcel number two built for seventy seven. Um, $534 and YWCA um, North Central PA's Liberty House program for $120,000. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Any comments? No, this is, um, this is money that also is coming from out of the state and it uh, helps the economy. All these, these are going to be creating jobs too. People are going to be working at some of the, with some of this money, building homes, rehabbing. That emergency uh, program at STEP, the commissioners created to deal with uh, situations where there's an emergency. So if you know a senior or someone who's uh, income qualified 
Jenny, do we have an income qualification on that program? Yes, for, for all of these we do. Right. Um, for all of these, we they're, they're supposed to target um, low to moderate income individuals in Lycoming County. Um, we cannot help anyone who is over the 200% um, of the median area income. So for 2021, that is $144,000, 144, $600,000. Um, so that's the very, very high end, um, but more um, regular, more frequently, the funds help people who are in the mid-range. So um, the median area income um, is seventy-two thousand dollars, around that. Now so that's that program. That that program has a median area income of seventy-two thousand. But that's the, when we talk about a median household income, and we usually quote about fifty-four thousand, right? Yeah, it depends on the program. Uh, each program we work with has a different threshold. Right. Um, so this one in particular is a little bit more generous than some of our other programs we work with, like the Community Development Block Grant funding. Um, so this one does um, allow to, um, us to help individuals with a higher um, household income. So it, it does um, benefit uh, more individuals than some of our other programs. Okay, I'm glad to see the American Rescue Workers and Rental Assistance Programs receiving funds and also the YM, YWCA, um, the Liberty House, which is a, a location that helps uh, women with children uh, with housing there. So it's good to see those, those agencies being assisted too. So, uh, motion. I'll move to approve the fair allotment. Aye. 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 Hi. Hi. So, Carrie. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Commissioners. Have a good day. Thank you. Jason Morris has 8.11 through 8.15. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, real quick, slight rebuttal uh, to the one mention that uh, Shannon mentioned about the taxes on the properties of the farms and stuff. The landfill has paid the taxes, the school district taxes, and everything on all those properties as when we purchased them to current. So the school districts, the property owners never uh, went without the taxes being paid on that property. Okay. So. Oh, that's good to know. So yes. that's not that's something I did not know. So in other words, at the time that the landfill, they, they put the, the value of the assessment at the time that it was purchased. Yes, sir. And out of revenue coming from the landfill, landfill they paid, paid the taxes, taxes straight through. Great, yes. great, okay. Okay, uh, commissioners, for your approval. Uh, 811 is the rate sheets and the increases for the I should say this the rate sheets for the landfill there was no changes the transfer station we did raise the rates for the commercial accounts and the commercial haulers certified haulers went from 5280 to 55 for the commercial haulers also at the transfer station there will no longer be the discount volume program offered. Uh, the haulers are still able to get discount volumes, but they just need to bring the material to the landfill. So these are the rates for the 2022. We also are still not currently accepting refrigerant items or electronics at the transfer station until our footprint expands and we can make some changes that are safe for the, uh, everyone so we can get the materials in and out. And just for the public to understand, the transfer station's purpose was not to be having 40 yard containers Correct. dumped on a continuous yeah. basis. Yeah. And so these changes are being made to encourage those uh, drops to be done where they should be. Yeah. 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 And, cr and that's correct, commissioners. And we, we're on track right now to reach 38,000 tons at the landfill this year. And that, that facility is, um, that current footprint of the facility was never meant to handle that kind of volume. You it's mean the transfer station? The transfer station, the yeah. Yet. Or excuse me, yeah, the, the transfer station. So yes, um, but we, we have not made any rate changes at the transfer station since 2009. So with all the given issues uh, and cost of operation. It's been nine years? Yes. Okay. I am motion to accept. I'll move to accept. Second? I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, um, item 8.12 is the purchase of a 2021 CAT 450 backhoe for the transfer station, the amount of $149,945. This is a 2021 budgeted item. 
Uh, unfortunately, we're just getting to it as far as late in the budget. We wouldn't, we probably wouldn't have received it anyways in 2021. Uh, as pretty much as you know, most of our equipment takes quite a bit of time now to get in. We're still waiting on several pieces we've already purchased. So this is, again, this is a 2021 purchased budget item and it'll be purchased through the CoStars program. Okay. A motion? I'll move to approve. Second. Second. All favor say aye. Aye. Commissioner? Aye. Okay. Aye. So carried. Commissioner's next item is 8.13. That is the purchase of a 2021 CAT 725 haul truck in the amount of $310,216. This again is a 2021 budget item. This is a 25 yard ton haul truck. This is the largest size haul truck that we can still use to get across our scales when we have items and materials that we have to weigh. Um, this is replacing a 2000 and I believe a 2003 haul truck. Um, this was funded through our purchase, through our revenues, uh, again, it's through CoStars, and it was for this year's budgeted line items. Yeah, and actually, that's a good point. All of these purchases for the public awareness are coming out of revenues from the landfill, which still managed this year to put into the general fund. $3.9 million. $3.9 million from the revenues, the excess revenues of the landfill yes. to the general fund. That is good news. And it's very good news. And a motion. I'll second. I'll move. Yeah. I'll move to approve. Any seconds? All in favor say aye. 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 So carry. Aye. Commissioners, 8.14 is the purchase of a Motorola radio repeater system in the amount of $75,115.45. This is through Com Keystone Communications. This is a 2022 budgeted item. Given the purchase uh, field that we're in right now, the world this uh, needs to get purchased now. We want to get it going because it'll be till 2022 till we get it. It is a concern of ours for safety. Mm -hmm. This will give it, the repeaters we have are, A, they're out of date, uh, can't be upgraded. We're going to be replacing the repeater on the Armstrong Tower. We'll be, replace, we'll be placing a repeater on top of our wire tower. It will give us the ability to key the mic at the landfill and talk directly instantly to folks in the road. Uh, drivers on the road, transfer station, and so forth for any kind of issues and emergencies. And you won't actually pay for it until 2022, right? It, it will. I I don't see it making it here till 2022. Okay. Sure. But e either way, we do have the funding and our capital fund to cover the purchase. But it's just it takes a while to get this stuff. And this is vital for the safety of your own. Yes, it is. Yeah. Motion. I'll move to approve. Uh, second. All favor say aye. 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 Commissioner? Hi. So, Gary? Uh, lastly, Commissioner's 8.15 is in a rental agreement for a Cat D8 dozer uh, on an as needed basis for $165 per hour. So, this rental agreement is only for the dozer, the D8 dozer that we'll be trading in, but due to the fact that our current on order D8, we have no delivery date. It originally was supposed to be September, then it went to October, November. So I need to have a D8 dozer available. Uh, this is our old D8 that we've traded into Caterpillar. The Cleveland Brother folks uh, put a new undercarriage on it. They invested the money into it. Then they'll put it into the rental fleet after we're done with it, once our new one shows up. But just like last week, I was missing, a, uh, our one D8 went down in the waste. So then I was not able to screen uh, dirt over on the farm. Uh, we're, we're we're really behind on the farm side to get dirt screened. The weather's going to start closing in on us, so we need to have a D8 available. Uh, Caterpillar Cleveland Brothers said they'd be willing to fix it, uh, have it available to us. It'll it'll remain on the property until our new D8 shows up. And these the th special thing about these are these have a waste handler package, so they're meant to go into the the garbage, which is pretty abusive to equipment. So was it ours or was it theirs? It was ours. It was ours. It is ours. And it's the D8 that we did the buyback program on and that we traded it in because it needed a $60,000 undercarriage and it was giving us some other issues, um, equipment issues and stuff. So we set it in with Caterpillar. They made a, a great buyback program with us. So we're actually, we're waiting on a new one. But in the meantime, we're out of a D8. So Cleveland Brothers invested the money, fixed it, and then they're giving us a rental agreement. If nothing breaks down currently, we won't have to use it. But on a Friday afternoon at three o'clock, 
Uh, if our D8 goes down in the waste, we need to have something available to keep the waste going. So. And this is a short-term lease that will expire on March 20, March 31st, 2022. Yes. Well then, so what I'm trying to understand is they're leasing really the repairs they did. We still own the the, the machine, and and they're the, the only reason I'm trying to understand this is that after the lease is up, who takes possession of the equipment? Caterpillar. Oh, because it was part of the trade. It was part of the yeah. trade. Right. Yes. So we actually don't own it anymore. No. We traded it into them. They yes. then turned around, fixed it up, and said, "Hey, if you want to use yes. it, lease it, you can do it." And there's really no other equipment with the waste handler package right. in a rental fleet. People right. don't keep it. Yeah. So. Okay. I'll move to approve. I'll second. On fair side. Aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Chaser. Sure. Yep, have a good day. You too. Thank you. The um, next, I think it's 25 items are yep. all uh, with Rodney Moorhart. Rodney, would you like to handle these all together or separately? Um, to do the two contracts together and then the, mm -hmm. with the buyers and then our generators together. Okay, okay. And maybe, sir, Mr. Chairman, maybe we could just read who the contract's with so the public knows. Yes. Then vote as one. Absolutely. Okay. Sure. Okay. okay, so 816. E16 is a contract with Canals Foods. Um, they would like to purchase 1,250 credits at $3 each. Um, credit basically is a pound of nitrogen that they're over their allowance through DEP for the water year. Um, the credits are generated by farmers in our program. The second contract, 817, is with Republic Services for their modern landfill in York. And they're looking to purchase 16,700 credits, also at $3 per. Those two combined. 16,700 credits. Credits. Not yep. Credits. credits. So that's, those sales would be a total of $53,850. How much was the Canals food total? Uh, $37.50. Republic would be $50,100. Okay, any questions or discussion? How does that per credit rate compare to last year, Rod? Do you remember what we were? We sold the majority of ours are at three last year. We had one buyer approach us for six dollars per credit, and they approached us again this year. They didn't need any, so these are the only two that reached out to us and needed them. Um, I thought since beginning of May that we had them all sold. The Republic Services ended up needing less than they thought and some of their suppliers they've dealt with year after year were able to provide more than they had anticipated so and this will be the last year of the program right? correct yeah okay so we we've seen it started out somewhat high and active and it sort of waned over the year yeah i'll move to approve the two contracts uh, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. aye. Eight, 818 through 840. You just want to read all their names yeah. and then we'll vote on the collective group. Correct. Thank you. These are the basic standard contracts with the landowners who generate the credits in the county of Lycoming. Um, do you want them listed individually, like 819? Really? Yeah, please. Okay. Thank you. The first one, 8.18, is with Wayne and Ruth Van Dyne. 8.19 is with Theodore and Tracy Barber. 8.20, Bishcroft Farms, LLC. 8.21, Charles Bosch. 8.22, Ernest Brown. 8.23, Evan and Amy Brown. 8. 24, Mary Budendorf and James McCoy. 825, Bernard and Diane Dencher. 826, Bradley Gabbett. 827, Glade Run Farms, LLC. 
824, John and Wanda Harvey, 829, JRT Farms, 830, Patricia and Cameron Coons, 831, Harold and Joan London, 832, Lostbrook Farms Incorporated, 833, Richard and, Ka Richard and Karen Mowry, 834, Russell and Marie Wrights, 835, Harry and Diana Rogers, 836, Shrack Farms Resources, 837, Michael and Vanessa Sherman, 838, Jeremy Snyder, 839, Thomas and Daisy Steyer, in 840, Charles and Bonnie Ulmer. Okay. So, how do the folks, these folks are all, you know, benefiting from the program. How do they feel about the program going away? They understand. Um, the reason we're moving away from it is the amount of time that is put into the program um, and the cap that's coming on community the county clean act clean water action plan um, there's work that we are going to need to do for that that this takes away from allowing us to do that so like I said they understand um, None of them are happy to see the money go away, but yeah. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, I have a motion to accept uh, items 8.18 through 8.40, the contracts involving these different entities and individuals regarding the joint trading. I'll move to approve the nutrient trading contract for I have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner comment? Well, I don't know. I think we, I'll wait on it. I, I was going to try to get some public feedback, but I think everyone's exhausted today. It's been a long Regarding what? Regarding this this whole job incentive program that we talked about, and the, and I'm curious as to get the public's feedback on whether we should be doing that or whether we have enough economic growth here. You know, whether we should be, it specifically whether we should be giving a, a million dollars to uh, to the West Pharmaceutical or whether the five hundred thousand that we committed. Uh, maybe what I'll do is just put it out there for the public to give us feedback. So, a while back. Uh, last August of 20, was it 2020? I think it was August of 2020. Um, it might have been October because I wasn't at the meeting. Yeah, it might have been October. Um, I was on vacation. I wasn't at that meeting. Right. Uh, Commissioner Masser and I had met at the request of the Chamber and West Pharmaceutical with the folks up in... Um, Jersey Shore because West Pharmaceutical wanted to expand the, the factory and the Whelan Center is sitting on property that they would need for the expansion. Um, they, the fire company had, gen, had uh, graciously agreed to sell them the property but the property, uh, what they wanted to pay was not going to be anywhere near what the uh, fire company would need to effectuate it and be able to create a new uh, building. So we haven't voted on this, but we, I said that I was of the view that I was willing to uh, to put forth half a million dollars, and I believe Commissioner Masser at that meeting uh, expressed the same sentiment and said, of course, that we have to, it has to go to a vote and so forth. So we have out there the question of, of whether we're going to award half a million dollars to effectuate the West Pharmaceutical. Now, West then came to us and was looking for another half a million for a program which we have not created, but which we talked about creating. And um, the program was to basically reward employers for either retaining or bringing jobs to the county. 
And actually, it was an idea that we had come up with at a meeting when we seemed to be in a slump with economic development. And I had asked the chamber president, Mr. Fink, if he knew of any programs. He said the one in the uh, the one in the uh, state had gone away. The state was no longer funding it. And we kicked around the idea. Subsequent to that, we seem to have, for some reason which we haven't figured out yet, a lot of businesses come to the county. We had Digger come with 150 jobs. We had, of course, we had uh, Geisinger building the new facility, which would probably be about 250 jobs. We had two Chinese companies acquire, sh one acquired ShopVac, another one acquired um, J&K Aluminum. And J&W. J&W, I'm sorry, J&W Aluminum. Chance Aluminum. Chance Aluminum. But they acquire J... They acquire J&W J and Aluminum. Aluminum. And, and so we seem to have... Chance Aluminum. We, we seem to have a lot of businesses coming here. So out there is this request for another $500,000 from West. I have been inclined to say that we cannot and we should not do that because we've already committed $500,000 and frankly this is not a mom and pop business. In 2020 uh, West Pharmaceutical had revenues of $2.1 billion. The CEO Eric Green had compensation of $7,642,000 in 2020. His, of that uh, $2.9 million was cash. He had a base pay of about a million and he had bonuses of about one point or just about two million. So I look at this and we never promised them the second 500,000. We made a commitment. We obviously have to vote on the first 500,000 for the Whelan Center, but we never did it. We, um, we were visited by uh, one of their lobbyists uh, in a Zoom call and I specifically said to him, and we followed it up in a letter, we said that if the Lycoming County Board of Commissioners creates a program, we would not um, disqualify them by virtue of the fact that they had did this uh, job uh, program, uh, the, uh, the selection of Williamsport, uh, before anything was created. But I'm, I'm looking at the fact that a company like Digger came here with 150 jobs. We haven't given any money to them. Um, they bought the uh, land at market rate. And in fact, they now unfortunately are being hit by a tap-on fee of $170,000 by the Montgomery Water uh, Authority, which is, which is probably about three or four times higher than what uh, the Williamsport Water Authority charges for a tap-on fee, and we're kind of concerned about that. But I just think a million dollars. So I was going to ask the public what they thought and whether, and, and it's not to say that West isn't a long-time uh, community member. They are, but uh, this is not a mom-and-pop business. This business has revenues of over $2 billion, 50 global locations, 25 manufacturing sites, and we are not a wealthy community. And I think that we've committed $500,000 to them and that um, giving another 500000 would be, in my estimation, not only overreach, but somewhat irresponsible considering that we met with our water and sewer authorities and I bet we have just in water and sewer needs in this county far in excess of what we have in ARP funds, not to mention the fact that we have all sorts of other needs from early learning to um, just other programs. So I was asking, that's my comment today, I'm asking the public to reach out, tell me if you think I'm wrong, uh, tell me that if you think that 500,000 is enough and we don't need to give another 500,000 to West, tell me that also. 3202124 is our office number and feel free to send an email. Well, Commissioner, we have a meeting with Jason Fink to talk about this exact thing this week. So yeah. I think uh, you'll obtain some more information from Mr. Fink this week. Okay. Um, the fact that I wasn't at the initial meeting and, and uh, I haven't even been updated on everything yet, I think we're kind of putting the horse before the, uh, the cart before the horse. So uh, well, I understand your concerns, and um, but I think uh, we need a lot more information going forward before we uh, even put it on the agenda. Right. We talk, the, the reason I'm bringing it up is because we've talked about it for months, and in fact, this is probably the fourth or fifth time that Jason's brought it up at our monthly meeting, asking about West ha other half million dollars, and I just think that we've never talked about it publicly. We've, we've only, um, you know, we've only talked about it among ourselves, so we should, 
it's a it's a balancing act between using money that we have. We have very limited funds, trying to use them to get the best bang for our buck. So that's that's uh, my concern. Commissioner, you have anything? No, uh, he he summarized that quite well. Okay. Want to comment this time? Um, Carlos Saldivia um, says kudos to Commissioner Mirabito for having um, spine and pushing back. And he also says, regardless, Krista, you were invited. And then he finishes up, um, I certainly disagree with the commissioners on the unlawful flyovers of my house for 3D imaging. That's a big <coughs> problem. Okay. Cool. Any comments from the public in the room? Yes, I'd like to thank Eileen for your service, and I'm going to miss you. I uh -huh. appreciate all the help you've given RMS. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to miss you, and you've done a fantastic job. And thank you for your, for your service to the county. I will ditto that, and uh, we're excited that you have some great, exciting changes going on and uh, come back and visit us I will you know Absolutely. I'll see you tomorrow yes yeah. yeah. coming in tomorrow now you can come out come over here and make public comments yeah. I like that <laughs> <laughs> there you go I'll get more involved if you stand up there there you go <laughs> thank you we always encourage that mm -hmm. okay we have completed our agenda so the means adjourn we'll have our next meeting on Tuesday, November 16th, right here at 10 a.m. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Where, where are the contracts?